Hello and welcome to episode 16 of the Admin Bar. Today we are going to be talking about how we set up OBS for Facebook live streams. Because Matt, this is a question we get asked like at least once a week about how we get all this set up or what we use to stream. We've even had somebody join our group and ask us questions about it that works at a live streaming company. How do you like that? It's like we know what we're doing or something. Yeah, go figure. Yeah. It's only it's only part right. Yeah, it's funny because I mean we just kind of um, we found software that we thought might work and we uh, we kind of just wung it, wing, winged it, wanged it, wanged it. Yeah, we just <laughs> yeah. Kyle and I got together and we just wanged it and uh, it all worked out and it all worked out well. Um, one of the the reasons that I ended up going with OBS is that it's open source and because of that the uh, the documentation and the uh, like you know the forums online there is a plethora of information so you know even if um following what you're going to see here today if you do have questions like you can definitely reach out to kyle and i however um obs's official site there's also um i mean just google like obs problems or issues or whatever and you're going to find just so many helpful people that probably know a lot more about it than uh, either kyle or myself um, we just, we literally use it or I use it for just this one purpose, uh, the admin bar and nothing else. So, I mean, I'm, I'm only knowledgeable as far as, uh, literally this goes anything else. Um, like that's, that's definitely gonna, gonna be the OBS community. That's going to be your, uh, your, your wingman on this one. Or Wang Man. Yeah, I've actually looked up uh, looked up several things. I do some other videos where I actually wanted to put myself in a circle instead of just a square. And I found a way you can mask off video feeds or images or whatever right inside of OBS, mm -hmm. uh, which has worked perfect. You can actually set up a green screen inside OBS, which I played with and, and worked pretty well. So today's episode is going to be a little bit different as we are not having a guest on with us. It will just be me and Matt. And it's also pre-recorded and not being uh, live streamed. So the reason we did that is we, <clears throat> we're we kind of going to go back and forth. Matt's going to show you some things from the OBS side. I'm going to show you a little bit about how we set up our background slate in Photoshop. So if you are listening to this as a podcast, you might as well stop here pretty shortly and uh, hop over to theadminbar.com and check out the video because pretty much everything else that's going to happen in this is going to be pretty visual uh, and it probably won't work so well as a podcast. Yeah, I think it would be a, a pretty terrible listen. So uh, yeah. watch, don't listen. That's right. I will say, though, we just hit uh, 900 members in our Facebook community, which is super awesome. It makes me uh, really anxious to get to four digits now. So we got we to gotta add another 100 members here pretty quick. We've been going at, I don't know, 130 or so uh, a month. So that should happen eh, probably at the beginning of March, I would estimate. So for all of those of you who are new here, hello and welcome, and we're glad to have you. Uh, obviously, as you can see, we're a pretty relaxed little group. We like to have some fun, learn a few things, and kind of hang out with our peers. So that's what we're all about, and I think that's what everybody's kind of enjoyed in the community. I will say next week we are going to have a regularly scheduled episode. Episode number 17 will be with Beth Livingston, and she actually uh, specializes in project management principles and techniques, and she has told us she has the secret sauce for always getting projects done on time and within budget. How do you like the, them apples? Man, I don't, I don't know what that secret sauce is made out of, but I definitely need some. <laughs> no doubt, especially the... Uh, the getting things done on time. That always seems to be my problem. And that that in, in turn affects the budget when you have to spend way too much time on it. You can't charge enough for that. That's true. Yeah. I mean, every uh, every day that you're waiting for copy or those images or, or whatever, you know, that's, that's a, a project that you're not able to work on, but is taking time up uh, or time away from your schedule um, just in case that stuff does come in. So you are, you're bleeding money. So the, the quicker you can turn around projects and the, uh, the better like client management you can do, the, uh, I mean, really, it's beneficial to everybody. Yeah, and I know something I'll bring up to her next week, and I'm just kind of going off now, but um, 
you know, when you're solo, like a lot of us are, you can only handle so many projects at one time, you know, so you can go from being way too slow with maybe one or two website projects going on to buried in work when you just get to four or five, you know, the, there's a really thin line at how much you can handle and you kind of want to stay in that middle ground. So the problem I uh, a lot of times run into when clients aren't getting stuff done in a timely manner is I feel like I can't onboard new clients yet because I still have a job that's hanging out, but I don't know when they're ever going to finish their stuff. So I'm kind of stuck in this limbo where I'm not able to make as much money as I'd like to. So that's definitely something I'm looking forward to uh, Beth helping us out with. So I'm excited about that next week. So before we get uh, started on all this OBS training, Matt, do you have anything else to add and tell the people? No, I don't think so. We uh, basically check this out. It's next section. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Y'all enjoy. Let us know if you have questions. Okay, so I think the best place to start is at the beginning, the uh, the basics of OBS. Um, I'm going to kind of go through this a quick little tour of how I have set up OBS for the admin bar. Um, and yeah, let's go. So the uh, the first piece here is what we're looking at is the, uh, well, for the lack of a better word, dashboard. Um, it's got your scenes, your sources, your mixer, your scene transitions, and your controls. Uh, we don't use scenes at the admin bar, um, so I'm not going to really go over these. However, just really briefly, if you were to have, um, say, the same setup as we have um, and also wanted to show a full screen uh, video capture or like screen capture, um, you could set up two scenes, one being the, uh, the slate with the video of all the people that you've got on and one being just that screen recording. Um, and then you can actually transition between the two, um, choosing fade or cut and going into studio mode, which allows you to transition between, uh, the two. Uh, but again, we don't use that. So that's, uh, pretty much all I'm going to talk about as far as that goes. Um, now we've got your scenes or your, sorry, your sources. Um, and these are going to be your video feeds. Um, it's going to be the backgrounds and anything else that you want, uh, living in this uh, this area. Um, you've got your controls over on the right. You've got uh, start streaming, start recording, studio mode, settings, and exit. So start streaming, you would click that uh, once you get into Facebook's back end um, and start setting that up. We'll go into that in the next part. Uh, start recording, that actually records it directly to uh, your desktop, um, to your, your hard drives. Uh, for whatever usage you want later on. Um, and then there's settings, which can be also be found up in the file section here. Uh, so I'm gonna run through all of the, uh, the settings tabs aside from hotkeys because uh, I don't have any set up. Uh, we don't really have a need for them. Uh, but this way, like I'm gonna scroll down through these so you can uh, take a look through and see if every, all of my options match yours. Uh, it's been a while since I set up OBS for the first time, and I don't remember exactly what I've changed. Uh, but that's kind of the beauty of OBS is that, uh, you know, once you set it up, it's done. You know, you just open the program, throw in your, uh, your slates, your video feeds, and you're good to go. Um, to the best of my knowledge, to the best of my memory, I didn't change anything on the, uh, the general uh, tab here, the stream tab, we're going to choose your streaming services. Um, and then as far as services go, they've got a plethora of them. Uh, we're going to be using Facebook Live, so you would choose that. Uh, your server is default, and the stream key is what you'd get from Facebook just before you, uh, you go live. Um, we'll get into that in the next part as well. Your output, uh, not too much here has been changed. Um, Bitrate may have been, but again, um, feel free to pause the menu uh, or the video and uh, just make sure everything here matches as well. Recording, this is where you would uh, choose your recording path. So I have mine going to my D drive under a folder called recordings, which makes sense. Your format, <clears throat> Excuse me, your format. Um, I think FLV is what uh, is just out of the box. Um, I can't stand working with FLV files. So I chose MP4 with the caveat down here saying that if anything goes wrong, 
it's not gonna be saved. So just make sure that, uh, you know, nothing goes wrong, I suppose. It's a bit of a trade-off. Um, MKV also, um, I think that one may work better if you wanna record multiple audio tracks, consider. So yeah, I mean, it's, um, it's totally up to preference for uh, your format, really, but uh, we use MP4. Uh, stream encoder for the encoder itself. Nothing's been changed on audio. It's all uh, 160. Whoops, changed that one. Uh, 160 for the most part, all the way down. And we don't have a replay buffer either. Um, if you wanted to, you can choose uh, how long that buffer is. Uh, but again, we have no need for it. Audio, the, let's see, I don't think that anything aside from my sources have been changed on this. Um, so my desktop source is my speaker, uh, and then the auxiliary or microphone port is, or uh, device is my Blue Snowball, not my Oculus Rift. Just make sure that all of that is uh, all set correctly. And then we've got your video. So my base canvas is at 1080. However, I do downscale it to 720 when I'm recording, um, as well as streaming to Facebook. It's a little bit easier on my CPU. And um, as far as recording goes, it's certainly better on my file sizes. Uh, those can add up very quickly. My downscale filter for this, I chose by cubic, uh, and then 30 frames a second, depending on the, uh, the the software that you're going to be using to edit the video. If, uh, if you do end up recording, um, you might want to change this to uh, whatever's native to that program. Uh, I just record in 30 frames per second and then uh, swap it out if I need to. Uh, again, nothing's been set up in hotkeys, although this is where you would do all of your, uh, your hotkeys to, to swap things out and uh, you know, mute, unmute, etc. Uh, under advanced, let's see, I think I did change a few of these, um, again, to, uh, to play nicer with my CPU, um, but I don't remember exactly what those changes were, um, so again, feel free to uh, pause the video and just make sure that all of these options match. Uh, all right, so... Next up is going to be adding the video, uh, the background slates, and uploading or uh, streaming live to Facebook. All right, let's talk about how we get this set up in Photoshop. So I do have a document here that is 1920 pixels by 1080 pixels. I have it set to 300 resolution, but that's probably a bit overkill. Anyways, you can resize it inside of OBS, and I'd rather it be too big than too small. So I have this broken down into two different files here, or folders inside this document. One is the static content and the dynamic content. So first we'll look at the static content, the things that stay the same. We have the background image, and then I actually have a filter over the top of it, which is just a uh, layer that I've filled in a dark gray color and changed the blend mode to multiply and the opacity to 53. On top of that is this yellow bar, our logo, and our website address. I have the frames for our video set in this folder as well. But I do have several different setups of these depending on how many guests we have and how we need to fit that in there. In the other folder, I have our episode number, which you can see is still editable. So we can change that out for each episode quickly and easily. Same goes for the title of the show, the date, my name, and Matt's name. Now you can save this out and put the video feeds on top of this image in OBS, but because you can't control it very precisely, it's very hard to get the video to line up perfectly inside this frame. So actually what we do is go to this frames layer, get the magic wand tool, and select inside of both of these boxes. Then we can scroll down to this filter layer, delete that inside part, and the background image will delete that out. And that will leave a transparent background. So now we can actually put our video feed in behind this background so that it'll be masked off perfectly. All we have to do is save this out as a PNG to preserve the transparency. 
Okay, so this is the part that uh, I think a lot of people are interested in, and that is setting up the, uh, the style and uh, getting the video feeds to display properly. So we've got the, uh, the Zoom call here, and of course you can use any other video chat software. Um, it really doesn't matter the source. We use Zoom, it's easy. Um, and here's OBS. This is really what you're going to see when you, uh, when you first open it up, aside from the fact that we do already have our setup uh, set up. Um, for the sake of this video, though, I'm going to build it from scratch. So we saw Kyle build the, uh, the background slate, so we're going to add that first. Um, you can do that by right-clicking and choosing Add, or we can, um, we can hit this plus button here. And because it's an image, we're going to choose Image and say OK, and then you browse to that location. So mine are in the admin bar, in video asset slates, and there it is. So you choose that. It's automatically going to fit so long as the, uh, the aspect ratio when you first set it up was correct. And then you hit OK and lock that so you can't, uh, you can't drag it. The next step is to bring in the, the video feeds from Zoom. And again, you're going to add, and this time we're going to add a window capture. Say OK, and choose that window that, uh, wow, I've got a lot of nulls here. Uh, find Zoom, I believe that's the one right there. So you can see us say OK, and that basically mirrors the entire window and if you take the um, the little, little handles here you can resize it or you can um, adjust it by holding alt and dragging so I'm going to do mine first and you just kind of resize it on the fly position it where it needs to go and you'll notice that it is on top of the uh, the slate so you just drag that and bring it down below, and now it's now it's hiding behind it. So basically, so. when you pull those handles without the Alt button, you can actually resize how big it is, and then if you hold the Alt, you can actually mask it off. So you're just masking into one video feed, right? Exactly. Yeah. So we're going to do the same thing again, um, only this time we're going to mask everything but Kyle. Yeah, and so we usually, when we uh, start a show, we ask our guests to get on there about 15 minutes before, and we will kind of just break the ice and chit-chat for a little bit, go over the game plan for the show. And while we're doing that, Matt actually sets up all the video feeds in here. Uh, so it's just kind of our process as we go through. So it really doesn't take too much extra time, uh, and you can kind of do double duty at the same time. Um, and bingo, look at that. We are all set up. So this is, uh, this is how it looks. And this is how we do it. Um, you know, these are these are loose. You can lock them if you'd like, and then you can't can't drag them around. And then the next step after this is uh, hopping onto Facebook and choosing live video. You're not going to be using a camera. Instead, we're going to choose connect, and that's going to bring up the back end of the uh, the live stream. So there's the server URL. We're not going to be using this because we actually are using just the default server, uh, which we talked about earlier in this video. And then we've got the, uh, the stream key. So we are going to, I actually just unchecked the, checked the, uh, the persistent stream key. So it's, uh, it's going to be different every time. Um, copy that, go back to OBS, go to file, settings, stream, and then that stream key there, I'm going to delete the old one and paste in the new one, hit apply, and then OK. And then from there you can say start streaming. And you'll notice if I uh, move this away, Facebook is already fetching that video stream. Just like that. So we're not live yet. Um, but it's connected. But it is connected, so it's a good way to, uh, to make sure that everything's running properly before you do go live at this point you know you'd fill in your description and uh your title and and all of that and then when you're ready to go live you uh click go live so look at that we are live um from here you would uh 
I mean, we we actually record onto our hard drives as well. Um, that way, we have a, a copy for for YouTube and and the website and all that stuff as well. Um, however, that's that's pretty much it. Uh, Kyle, do you want to add anything? Yeah, I mean, the reason we record it locally too is you can record a higher resolution copy to upload to YouTube because Facebook's going to downsize it to what, like 720 pixels. So if you try to download the copy afterwards, it's a little uh, fuzzy. So if you record it uh, locally, it's easy to edit it and then post it up on YouTube as well when we're done because we like to repurpose it in both those places. Absolutely. So then when you're uh, when you're all set and you're done with the uh, the live stream, you just hit end uh, end live video choose end and it'll say that your video has ended that OBS has disconnected and is trying to reconnect so you go to OBS you say stop streaming and then uh, back on Facebook click done don't delete it unless you want to delete it um, and then you'll uh, you're ready to roll from there it's uh it's it's your choice to do what what uh, you want to do with the uh, the piece that you recorded uh, directly to your hard drive. Um, I think that's about it. Did we miss anything, Kyle? No, I think that's it. I think the one tricky thing you got to be careful of that uh, we didn't go over is the way uh, we're pulling in those video feeds from Zoom. Um, if somebody joins or leaves that Zoom call because we're just cropped into an area of that window, uh, that will screw the whole thing up. Or if you resize uh, Zoom. So that's uh, true. Any changes you make to like the size of that browser or the layout that's in Zoom, you can have some issues with. So you do got to be careful about that. Get it in the position you want it. Make sure everybody stays connected. You know, don't have people jumping in and out of it. Uh, you could always even have more people on the call than you're showing in OBS and set up different views to be able to pull different people in. Um, I don't think we've done that yet, but I know that that'd be pretty easy to do, just setting up mm. different scenes and be able to pull multiple people in so you can have guests come in and out during one live stream. So the, like the there's like a, no limit to all the different things you can do with the OBS. And I know we're just kind of scratching the surface with what we do. Um, it's, a, it's a pretty cool platform. That it is. Um, and yeah, so just to, um, to illustrate what Kyle just said, so you can, you can take your Zoom video uh, feed and you can move it around and that's fine. But if you notice, if I start to shrink this, the same thing's going to happen within the, uh, the video there. So definitely keep it to the right size. Um, and I know that if you, uh, if you minimize OBS, it, uh, it doesn't actually minimize it um it just changes like the uh the shape um i think it turns it into like little boxes so actually if you do that as you can see it just freezes everything in obs so definitely keep it the same way that you did when you uh when you first started definitely helpful to do this with two monitors yes absolutely whoa kyle how do you like that pretty easy right that was easy and you did a great job man yeah, so did you i am impressed this uh this video was done you know states away half a country away uh at the same time but i have no idea what kyle was saying and kyle had no idea what i'm saying but i think it's been stitched together pretty well for wanging it we do all right buddy absolutely so um i'm thinking you know we definitely didn't cover nearly everything that OBS is capable of. Um, I'm going to reiterate that, uh, you know, we only use it for this one specific re uh, reason. And it's, uh, it's fairly limited as far as like what we actually do with it. Um, but the OBS community is incredibly knowledgeable and there's a ton of resources online if you do need to know more. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, I've, I've seen quite a few people asking about this and then also people who have tried it getting frustrated by it so hopefully some of the frustrations you have you kind of figured out during this episode uh and got some questions on how we set it up that answered some of your questions for you now on the other end of it if you see something that we're doing that we could be doing better let us know we'll yeah. be glad to hear about it because uh literally i mean the way the admin bar started uh we had an idea we're like hey let's do this um matt got put in charge of hooking up all the tech uh, I got started on getting everything set up on the website and Facebook group and stuff. And like a week later, we were recording episodes and just going after it. So uh, we're pretty good at wanging it. Um, 
but you know, we could always learn a little bit, something more. Absolutely. So before we sign off, just letting y'all know, you can go check out all kinds of stuff on the admin We have a on the house section on the website now, which is all of our freebies and giveaways. So the, uh, let's see, there's a lead magnet on there. You can get, there's a webinar for uh, printful uh, t-shirt setup. So you can start an e-commerce t-shirt store. Um, we also did the uh, serious SEO shit with Pete, which I'm going to have on there on the, on the tap page, a link to that for a little while, but that's probably going to go away, uh, by the end of this week. So go ahead and jump on that while it's still there. And you have the opportunity if you haven't got to see that yet. Other than that, let's just, uh, reconvene in about a week. What do you say, Matt? Sounds good to me. And as always, we're going to be on the admin bars website or Facebook, Facebook group. So, uh, we'll see you there. Awesome. See y'all. Bye.